Usually when new IDs are released, I like to bide my time, wait out the initial hype, and let my thoughts settle. Considering the fact that I should be releasing this video only a day or so after these IDs are released, needless to say, I was completely caught off guard by just how much these two would shake things up, and uh, it seems that Project Moon themselves also didn't expect it, uh, somehow. So, I'm here to ring out the details of this duo of starving artists, and yes, this video will bring on some puns, <laughs> so I hope you're ready to smash the dislike button and unsubscribe, cause god knows, I will deserve it. In this video, I'll be covering Ring Sang and Ring Otis, and specifically discussing how their specific mechanic has led to some of the most fun I have had theory crafting an actual team in a very long time. Along the way, I'll also talk about the state of Bleed, since both of these IDs have a strong emphasis on it and a strong impact on it overall, and as well, talk about their balance change and throw my hat into the metaphorical ring on the topic. <sighs> okay, I, I did the intro, even with the shitty puns you told me to do, so please tell me that was at least like a C... Oh no, please, come on, I, I need the ring's protection still, my, my, my family- oh! <laughs> Moving quickly along from the passing of another Mirror World Esku, let's start by talking about Ring Yi Sang, since he has, and this is an understatement, taken the community by storm. At a first glance, Ring Sang has a pretty unassuming kit, with a 3 coin skill 1, a single coin skill 2, and a 4 coin skill 3. But Ring Yi Sang is one of those few IDs in the game where you would absolutely get the wrong impression of him by just looking at his coins. First of all, that's skill 1. Now, most people would assume that this would roll the 9 following familiar traditions of old, but this decides to just be objectively better than over 80% of skill 1s by rolling an 11 for free. For reference, an 11 roll has only just become standard for 2 coin skills, on 2 star and 3 star IDs. But clashing the same as those, but with one extra coin, is significant for several reasons, most of all being this skill just deals more damage than most skill 1s with no particular drawback. Even IDs like Diechi Rodian or Diechi Hong Lu rely on insight for their powerful 3 coin skill 1s, and while Ring Sang doesn't reach their heights, there's definitely a large amount of value in having that good skill by default. Of course, this can be made even better by the enemy having 6 plus bleed netting you an extra clash power to a total of 12. While that's neat and great and cool and all, the next line is where the wackiness of the ring IDs begin to show. When you hit heads on the second coin of this skill, you inflict plus two count of a random status chosen from burn, bleed, tremor, rupture, or sinking. This ties in directly with his skill too, sanguine pointillism, which sounds like words a college student would use to fill out a character limit in an essay, which I guess is kind of fitting but it's also where Ring Yi Sang shows a lot of his true potential. While this is a single coin skill, it has a base power of 8, which is good for low sanity clashing, and a coin power of 8 to a total of 16. This can clash up to a 20 with his maximum conditionals fulfilled, namely 6 bleed and 6 bleed count total. But what really matters is that on hit effect, which states that there's a base 40% chance to reuse this coin, with an additional 20% chance added on for every type of negative status effect on the target, to a max of 2 reuses, aka 3 coins total. Before we talk about how that shapes up numbers wise, note that this skill inflicts 1 bleed count, and plus 3 count of a random status on hit, and this coin can be used 3 times meaning plus 3 bleed count and 3 instances of the sweet rush of gambling. Looking at the numbers, let's assume we don't have any coin power from the bleed count conditional. So we roll a 16, then reuse once for 8 more coin power to a 24, then once more to a 32. This means we end up with a skill 2 with a raw damage of 72. With maxed out coin power conditionals reached, make that 84. Which means... In raw damage, this skill is 6 below self-destructive purge. Yeah, that self-destructive purge. This is also the best skill in terms of animation to damage ratio, since for some reason the coins are just awkwardly stapled onto the skill even after the attack is over, meaning you just delete enemies. Straight up. They're gone. Now you might be thinking, well, how hard is that reuse conditional in practice? Well, um, really, really easy. 
especially when you remember that the skill itself inflicts bleed and has an 80% chance to inflict another non-bleed status, but we'll wrap back around to that in a bit. In the meantime, we have Hematic Coloring, a 4-coin skill with a base power of 3 to a ceiling of 15. Just like the skill 2, this gains Clash and Coin power based on bleed and bleed count, respectively, rolling up to a 25 in a Clash. This means a 23 roll in an attack, very close to what I like to call daring decision numbers, which is a pretty big compliment for an ID with an already insane skill too. In terms of effects, this skill inflicts one bleed count and two additional bleed count on the second coin if the target had three types of negative effects, which is a respectable amount, and then once again inflicts plus three count for one of the five statuses. The third coin does the same thing, but with potency for both of the effects instead of count. And then the last coin does up to 125% more damage based on how many negative statuses there are on the opponent. There's a neat bit of synergy here. If you roll Tremor, Burn, Sinking, or Rupture on the second coin of this skill, you will be guaranteed to deal at least 50% more damage with this last coin, which is Kind of absurd for a skill with 4 coins and such a good max roll. With a little bit of good luck, 75% more damage can be attained just by using the skill and getting a little bit lucky. And even if you get unlucky and apply more bleed instead of a different status, well, that's more bleed which empowers your other skills. The point, in case he didn't get it, is this ID is really strong, but he gets even better when you look at his passive, which makes for even crazier numbers somehow, since he gets to heal SP at an accelerated pace when hitting bleeding targets. A nice bonus, to be sure, especially for someone with an ego that can sap away 35 SP, but at max SP, Ring Sang also gets 2 offense level up per hit. Meaning, assuming all reuses are occurring and you are always at 45 SP, you just always have 6 offense level up per turn. Also known as plus 2 clash power and a decent damage increase. Here are his numbers accounting for this plus 2 clash power, assuming all conditionals are active, and of course this isn't even counting the potential plus 2 from bygone days, but that's just silly overkill at that point. His support passive is also kind of funny, and I want to mention it, because it has incredible synergy with Wing Beat Ishmael, making it vastly more consistent based on the math I've seen from various people that I'm not gonna bother doing myself, and either way, this is a Ring Yi Sang video, not a Wing Beat Ishmael video, but it's definitely worth a mention. Of course, all of these great skills have to come with some kind of downside, and in Ring Yi Sang's case, it's a big deal. His guard, and it pains me to say this, is mid, when the target isn't bleeding. Uh, truly, I don't know how he's going to recover from this devastating setback to his viability, but uh, maybe we can find a team or two to make him work. Okay, all joking aside, yeah, Ringy Sang is pretty insane, even just on paper, but this isn't a video singularly about him. Since Ring Otis, despite being a 2 star with, once again, unassuming coin amounts, ends up as a cornerstone of an entire archetype. Her skill 1, dotting, is average until it's not. An 11 roll on a 2 coin skill 1, as we discussed, is bog standard, but it can gain clash power and then coin power with enough bleed, potentially clashing at a 14, which is really good for the 2 star standard. The skill 3 is, uh, fine. The extra damage bonus based on negative effects really hard carries it, since the actual on-hit and on-use effects are pretty negligible. Not a bad skill, mind you, just nothing compared to her skill too. You see, Cloud Cutter died in 2023, so Sanguine Painting resurrected in order to make sure there was still a busted 4-coin skill on a 2-star ID based around bleed. This time though, instead of screwing itself over when there's too much bleed count, this is the best bleed count skill in the entire game. Sanguine Painting rolls a 13, but can clash at a 15 when the opponent has 6 plus bleed, making it similar to something like Picard Yi Sang's Relentless Stabbing, and what's also similar to Relentless Stabbing is the fact that Ring Otis relentlessly fucking stabs people, having the same reuse conditional as Ring Yi Sang's skill 2, with a 40% chance to reuse a second coin, growing by 20% based on unique negative effects. 
This can be reused up to two times, meaning four coins total, but what's even better is that this coin inflicts one bleed count, but it increases by one when being reused. Meaning this is a 21 rolling four coin skill that inflicts in total plus five bleed count. It's pretty sad when you look at someone like Rhino Merceau in comparison, who was considered a very consistent bleed count ID, who needs 7 plus speed, which can only be attained via his passive or with others' help, to inflict plus 4 bleed count on a 14 clashing skill by default, no less. All Ring Otis needs is 3 unique debuffs to get her insane damage value. In fact, that's all they both need. And it's this unique team building requirement that has people so riled up, since it's something most have never thought of before. Usually teams have a heavy focus on a single status effect, but now we want to consistently have three always. Oh, and by three, I really mean two, since bleed, as I've mentioned, for some reason counts. Yeah, uh, when you look at it this way, this is hardly a conditional. But okay, okay, you don't want to have to think too hard and come up with a team that gets you even two more debuffs consistently. Don't worry, that's why I'm here, to do the thinking for you until you are eventually solely reliant on me in order to do anything in your life. Shortly after the update dropped, I racked my brain for a team that both supported bleed and would make it so we have debuffs on the opponent as much as possible. And this is what I came up with. The ring IDs, obviously, and Faust, Middle Dawn, Hook Hong Lu, and Liu Rodian. Is this team optimal? I mean, probably not, but if you want to run any team with the ring IDs, and Faust is probably the biggest deal to have. Since Nails, while they are a unique bleed status, are still a negative effect separate from bleed, and they just so happen to synergize with it. And they are also pretty easy to keep up on the enemy, especially with an uptie 4 and Faust with her skill 2. Speaking of that skill too, it is really potent on this team. Gaze and Paralyze are both debuffs, and Gaze increases every single skill's power on this team since they are either Blunt or Pierce. As good and damn near essential as Enfaust may seem, Regret Faust also will work very well. Applying Tremor Count on her skill 1, a status that just takes a while to fall off, is convenient, and her skill 2 inflicts a whole host of debuffs that are just less useful offensively and don't synergize with the core status of Bleed. Also on Faust is Hexnail, which is a fantastic ego in tandem with the ring's nuke skills. So bringing a Faust with Envy, like Enfaust, is a great idea for the potential 3 pierce fragility. Middle Dawn is here mostly because of La Sangra de Sancho, which at Threadspin 4 is 8 bleed potency to add on to the stack. And believe me when I say that potency can end up being more important than count. But if you need count, Wishing Cairn can be used, though very sparingly, since Sloth is unfortunately a bit hard to come by. Hukong Lu is self-explanatory, he's a very good bleed ID with that skill too, and his skill 1 can maintain and add to the stack. And lastly, Liu Rodian is here for three reasons. Number 1, she applies burn, but more than that, she applies burn count on her skill 2, giving us another debuff. Number two, she's a Rodian ID, meaning she has access to Sanguine Desire, which is a valuable tool to ensure that bleed will not fall off. And third, she's um, she's a Rodian ID, and therefore has access to Effervescent Corrosion, which, while it's not fueled too well by this team, sadly, if you manage to use it, plus seven Tremor Count is a debuff that sticks around for a while consistently, and that passive would make it so Bind would be inflicted by half of her attacks on Heads Hit. As you would probably expect, there's a lot of ways you can build this team. Like using KK Rodian instead, sacrificing the better damage, unique debuffs, and uh, overall more enjoyable experience of Liu Rodian for potentially better Sanguine Desire synergy, though I wouldn't really recommend it obviously, or using Captain Ishmael who inflicts bleed and some slight burn slash burn count if you really need it, alongside the perfect sins to use Sanguine as often as is reasonable, and as a slight bonus, you can finally feel the full potential of her skill 3 with the coin power conditionals. There's also quite a few debuffs that I'm unsure count as negative effects, such as St. Clair's Declared Duel, or even Middle Dawn's Vengeance Mark, which would be fantastic if they did count, but I don't have a definitive answer for you there, even if my gut feeling is to say that they do count. 
What I can attest to is that with the team I recommended, you can instead bench Dawnclair, whose passive, very conveniently, allows the first deployed ID to inflict burn count on heads hit. Yes, even if they don't inflict any burn count by default. So slap this on Ring Yi Sang, and you're getting three burn count a turn when you have the Wrath Resonance. And it's not too hard to get every once in a while on a team, and really, that's all you need. Now, usually I would just keep yapping about numbers and hypotheticals and synergy and blah 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 keywords, but I decided that I wanted to have cold, hard proof that these IDs could work outside of Mirror Dungeon since they are undeniably busted in that game mode, so who even cares about talking about it? So I went to a place I never wished to return to again to prove that these IDs are just that good. Refraction Railway 3 now don't worry, I'm not going to take you through a whole run, god knows you've already seen enough footage of that on my channel, but I do want to show the team I used, with the notable support passives being pointed at with obnoxious red arrows. I played up to Ardor Blossom Moth, and the most important thing, as I am showing you some of these fights, is noticing just how much bleed I am able to stack up, and how much damage it is dealing. Like here on Silt Current, I was able to stack up 20 bleed potency and 11 bleed count by the end of my second turn fighting him. This is something that was just not possible before these IDs came out, at least not without a whole ton of RNG, so it feels way better now. Unfortunately, most fights in Railway 3 actually resist Lust, Pierce, and Wrath, but despite this, Gossipium went down in a respectable amount of turns while bleeding to death in a big way, though admittedly, most of that was near the end. Clam was a fight that showed some of Bleed's issues, since dealing with smaller enemies really sucks when trying not to use Ego, as I happen to do, since a lot of my strong, regular skills are the ones that inflict Bleed slash Bleed count, which always wanted to be focused on the biggest target, but Clam went down pretty easily eventually as well. Skin Prophet was particularly annoying due to his resistances and reluctance to letting me attack and clash with him. But Ring Yi Sang still managed to hit over 100 damage with his skill too, despite it being heavily resisted by Skin Prophet. And lastly, Ardor Blossom Moth was a pain, since once again, Pierce, Wrath, and Lust are resisted, but all the same, Bleed, Nails, and Burns stacked up and stuck around, leading to some highly respectable numbers from Yi Sang, while Otis was probably very upset I put her into a fight against a Moth that takes a little less than 0.2 times damage from her biggest attack skill. So yes, this railway test was quick and dirty, but I think it does show that the ring IDs allow you to finally stack bleed and use it semi-effectively as a damage source, as well as very effectively as a source for conditionals. But the best part about these two IDs is that you don't need to build them with hardcore bleed synergy. One more bleed ID to help them out would be great, but their best payoffs, in my opinion, are just having inflated damage numbers, which is achieved via the reusage. And I assure you, even with whatever scuffed roster you may have, you can end up making a team that gets you to three different debuffs when you need it. What is a shame, though, is that while bleed can get up to high potency and count, I think it will have to remain a situational nuke debuff for now, just due to it being annoying to initially build up, and even more annoying in some cases to pay off. Even with this fantastic new bleed support. Of course, there is one last thing to talk about, and it's a bit different from what I would normally discuss in a video like this. Project Moon, for basically the first time, expressed their desire to nerf an IED outright, specifically Yi Sang's skill 2. Now, this was quickly rolled back on, of course, but man, having two IDs be viewed as needing changes after hitting live servers, two banners in a row, is not good, especially since nerfing IDs once they are released just can't happen, frankly. Due to the nature of gacha games and how people spend money, it just doesn't make sense to go through the hassle of nerfing something, and honestly, why should nerfs even happen? Is Ring Yisang broken? I mean, yeah, but what does that affect? No, really, what negative impact does he have on the game outside of being maybe a little bit too strong? I'd say the most impact that an ID like this would have is giving us harder fights in the future to account for his strength, and personally, I am absolutely down for that, but hey, maybe I'm missing some kind of unknowable consequence. But IDs like Ring Yi Sang in his current state should have never got off the metaphorical runway to begin with, and trying to retroactively fix this mistake is sadly just not how it works. 
The best way to avoid stuff like this is to hire new testers, which it seems PM is doing, but also giving a small group of people early access to IDs to test and give feedback on might not be a bad idea either. And while I am under contract and not to speak of a certain email that may or may not be in my inbox, let's just say that Mr. Jihoon himself promised me that if I get 50,000 subscribers before the next Ice Age occurs, he might consider adding me to his beta test branch, so I'd appreciate it if you helped me out there. That whole mess aside, these two IDs are a breath of fresh air in my opinion, which is weird to say considering how strong they are, and they are absolutely of the highest priority to acquire. This is part of why I wanted to make this video as quickly as possible, so that this banner would still be going with plenty of time left, and yes, uh, three days is a very quick turnaround time for me, believe it or not. Even if you believe Yi Sang is overpowered and a blemish for balance, I personally can't really stay mad when their mechanic allows Limbus to be more varied and fun in the team building aspect. Support passives like Dawn Claire, as I mentioned, find a new use with these guys. And even someone like Kurakuma Gregor, whose support passive inflicts offense level down next turn if the opponent has 10 plus bleed on hit, finds a really good use case here. All of the N-Corp IDs synergize very nicely, with Endon probably being the single most versatile of them outside of Faust, even if she is sadly not all that good numbers-wise. Of course, KK Ryoshu and Rhino Merceau can be used if you want to fully lean into Bleed, and you can even make Burn more consistent with the addition of Liu Ishmael, while not missing out on too much damage at all, since she is just a solid ID. And again, I could go on and on. IDs like this that make you look at mechanics, or in this case, any debuffs, in a different way are great. Since the last IDs to properly do that for me were the middle IDs with NB skills slash resonance. So, who knows? Maybe all of the fingers will just have these really cool mechanics that shake up the game. But here's hoping the next batch aren't quite as game-breaking, but uh, hey, that'll lead to more views for me, so who am I to complain? But that's all from me. These IDs and the situations surrounding them are something I'm really curious to know the community's thoughts on, on the whole, since I've seen both sides. Being happy Yi Sang isn't getting nerfed, or disappointed that Project Moon backed down from it. So, if you have any particularly strong thoughts on the matter, feel free to leave it in the comment section below. Either way, as always, thank you for watching. This video ends now. Okay, was that good enough for you? <sighs> Thank God.